Hi guys, welcome back to Sim Raid YT in Raid Shadow Legends. Today we'll be working on the Ice Golem Peaks. But before we get into that, we'll just go back and we'll, we'll show you the standing where I'm at in the Great Hall. So you can see, you know, to what level I am, the, how I can beat stages at the level I'm at. As you can see, I've been mostly working on accuracy and because that's the most important part of each day each champion the more accuracy you can have on the champions the more chances of getting off their critical hits and and things and i've been working on void champions as you know they're the major of my champions i have it at the present time so i'll just show you what champions i'm going to be using i'll have arbiter in the team arbiter's skills are gaze of justice attacks one enemy two times each hit has a 30 percent chance of placing a 25 percent weakened debuff for two turns as you can see the additional books on her gives additional damage and buff chance places a 50 percent increased attack buff on all allies for two turns and fills the turn meters of all allies by 30 percent heals all allies by 25 percent of their max hp if they have less than 50 percent hp and the enforced attacks all enemies one time has a 75% chance of decreasing the duration of all enemies buffs by one turn and then the destinies revives all dead allies to 35% HP then fills the turn meters of all allies by 20% grants an extra turn on this champion if any ally was successfully revived so that's why I have Arbiter in the team so if other ch champions die she can bring them back to life we'll have Mother Side Belly as well now, Mother Side Belly, she's in here for her skills of attacks all enemies, has a 25% chance of placing a 30% decreased speed debuff for two turns. Also fills this champion's turn meter by 15%. Uncanny Transfer, if this champion has equal to or higher than targets after the swap, fills the champion's turn meter by 40%, places a 30% increased speed buff on this champion for two turns, and places a block damage buff on target ally for one turn. But mostly places a revive on death buff and 60% increased buff on all allies for two turns so she can revive champions as well and then fully heals ally with the lowest HP when this champion is killed heals all allies with 20% of their max HP and fills their turn meters by 15% when this champion is revived but her Aurora skills mostly should be in the lead to give the additional speed of 24% in all battle battles to our champions We'll have Royal Guard as well. He'll be our nuker for the team. He has the Razor Blade, which is attacks one enemy, has a 50% chance of placing a 60% decreased defense debuff for two turns. So as well, you know, if you add books to him, he'll get the additional damage and buffs. His hamstring attacks four times at random. Each hit has a 60% chance of placing a 30% decreased speed debuff for two turns. Each hit also has a 60% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 25%. But his main skill is take down all enemies. Damage increases according to the max HP. As well, we will have Madame Ceresa in the team. Just for her skills and buffs and debuffs. Attacks one enemy. Has a 20% chance of placing a fear debuff for one turn. This chance is increased to 30% if the target is under one debuff. This chance increases to 45% if the target is under two or more debuffs. Removes all buffs from enemies, places a 50% decrease attack debuff and 60% decrease defense debuff on all enemies for this for all for two turns. So this is her most crucial role, is this midnight ritual. Then we have the trick or treat, attacks all enemies, has a 40% chance of stealing one random buff from each target, places block debuffs on all allies for two turns if any buff is stolen. Places a true fear debuff for one turn on enemies who have a buff stolen. And then the Witch's Grace places a shield buff in this chamber equal to 10% of their max HP at the start of each turn. When attacked while under a shield buff has a 35% chance of placing a fear debuff on the attacker for one turn. And then we have Arm Armager. Now Armager's skills are attacks one enemy decreases the turn meter by 30% if this attack is critical. And then we have him lay to rest. Attacks one enemy, and enemies killed by this skill cannot be revived. So we'll have Armager in the team so he can work on the minions, and hopefully he gets the last hit on a minion next to the boss, so he can stop them from reviving. We'll have a look at the Masteries. Now I have him set up in offensive gear and support. Now his offense will make it quick. It gives additional crit rate. 
inflict increases the damage inflicted for five percent critical damage additional ten percent increases damage inflicted targets with less than forty percent HP by eight percent has heals by five percent of damage inflicted when attacking with fifty percent HP or less increases damage inflicted by six percent when attacking targets with, more, with higher max HP Increases damage inflicted by this champion's default skill by 2% each time it is used during battle. Stacks across each round in a battle up to 10%. Increases damage inflicted by 6% in the arena and 3% in all other locations for each enemy killed by this champion in battle. Stacks across each round in a battle up to 12%. And then we have him in Warmaster. Has a 60% chance of inflicting bonus damage when attacking. Bonus damage is equal to 10% of the target champion's max HP or 4% of the target max HP when attacking bosses. Bonus damage can only occur once per skill and does not count as an extra hit. For support, we have him as additional accuracy. Additional increases accuracy by 20% when this champion has no skills on cooldown. Increases accuracy by 4% for each enemy alive, stacks up to 16. Increases the base stat set bonuses of all artifacts set that increase base stats by 15%. This increases multi-active, not additive. Then we have decreases the target turn meter when this champion hits them with the default skill for the first time. Decreases the turn meter by 20% with a single target skills and 5% with AOE skills occurs once per target. And then we have increased speed by 8 for each L each dead ally stacks up to 24. Now the reason we have all the, the accuracy on, on him is we want that accuracy. So we have him at 257. Now we work on accuracy of 10 per level. So say if we're doing level 10, we want to have 100 accuracy. It gives more chance of his crit, crit rates to work. And of course you want to have 100% accuracy in his crit rate, but I've gone over that just because of the items I'm using. and as well accuracy so he has 257 so he should be good up to level 25 for his for his skills to work well the champions will show madame Ceres her masteries as well we've set her up in defense because it's you know to keep her alive as long as possible the additional defense there decreases damage received from aoe attacks by five percent Decreases the damage received by 10% of this champion has stun, sleep, beer, true fear, freeze, petrification, debuffs. Has a 50% chance to remove one random debuff from this champion when those lose 25% of their max HP or more from a single enemy skill. Reduces the damage this champion receives from a specific enemy by 0.75% with each hit taken from that enemy. Damage reduction stacks up to 6% from each enemy. And... Cycle of Revenge has a 50% chance of increasing the turn meter by 15% when an ally is attacked with a critical hit. In support, additional accuracy. Here we have the increased accuracy by 20. As you can see, we're working you know, to gain the additional accuracy so she can get her buffs and debuff buffs as well. Increases accuracy by 4 for each enemy alive. Stacks up to 16. Has a 30% chance of increasing the turn meter by 10% when a debuff cast by this champion is removed or expired. Increases the base stats set bonuses of all artifacts sets and increase base stats by 15. This increases multi-active, not additive. Decreases the target's turn meter when this champion hits them with the default skill for the first time. It increases the turn meter by 20% with single target skills and by 5% with AOE skill. Occurs once per target. Increases the chance of placing any debuffs from skills or artifacts by 5%. It will not increase the chance of placing stun, sleep, freeze, fear, true fear, provoke, or petrification debuffs. As well, we have Master Haxer has a 30% chance to extend the duration of any debuff cast by this champion by one turn. It will not extend stun, sleep, freeze, provoke, fear, true fear, bomb, or petrification debuffs. And last of all, we have the Eagle Eye. It gives it additional accuracy of 50. You know, just the same as what we have Armager. We want that accuracy. The more accuracy, the better. That gives us those chance of getting off those critical hits. Damage, you can work on having speed so she gets a lot more turns. So you want her to have come first, second in your team. So you know she can get out those buffs and debuffs before the other champions take their turns. Masteries on Armager. She's set up with a crit rate of 5%. Crit damage 10%. 
Increases damage inflicted by 5% when attacking full HP, so that'll help for our first turns. Increases damage inflicted to targets with less than 40% HP by 8%. The Life Drinker heals by 5% of damage inflicted when attacking 50% HP or less. Bring It Down increases damage inflicted by 6% when attacking targets with higher max HP. Increases the damage inflicted by this champion's default skill by 2% each time it is used during the battle. Stacks across each round in a battle up to 10%. Has a 6% chance of inflicting bonus damage when attacking. Bonus damage is equal to 10% of the target champion's max HP or 4% of the target's max HP when attacking bosses. Bonus damage can only occur once per skill and does not account as an extra hit. In support, we have the accuracy. We have the increased accuracy by 20 where this champion has no skills and cooldown. Increases accuracy by 4 for each enemy alive. Stacks up to 16. Increases the base stat set bonuses of all artifact sets that increase base stats by 15%. Decreases the target's turn meter when this champion hits them with a default skill for the first time. Decreases the turn meter by this 20% when single target skills and 5% with AOE skill occurs once per target. We have the increases the chances of placing any debuff from skills or artifacts by 5%. And has a 30% chance to extend the duration of any debuff cast by this champion by one turn. As well we have... The mastery is on Mother So Belly. She's set up an offense and defense to keep her alive. She has a crit rate of 5%. We have the crit damage of 10%. We have increases damage inflicted by 5% when attacking with 50% HP or less. Increases damage inflicted targets with less than 40% HP by 8%. Increases heals by 5% damage inflicted when attacking with 50% HP or less. Increases damage inflicted by 6% when attacking targets with higher max HP. Increases the damage inflicted by this champion's default skill by 2% each time it is used during the battle. Stacks across each round and battle up to 10%. And Warmaster has a 60% chance of inflicting bonus damage when attacking. In the defense we have the res of 10. We have decreases the damage received by this champion by 8% when this champion's hit is with a critical. Heals this champion by 10% of their max HP when they kill an enemy target. Reduces the damage this champion receives from a specific enemy by 0.75% with each hit taken from that enemy. Damage reduction stacks up to 6%. Has a 60% chance of placing a leech debuff for one turn when placing stun, sleep, fear, true fear, freeze, petrification debuffs. Has a 50% chance of counter-attack when this champion loses 25% of their max HP or from a single enemy skill. And has a 20% chance to counter-attack an enemy when they apply a stun, sleep, fear, true fear, freeze, petrification debuff on all allies. Cooldown in one turn. And we have as well, where is he? Oh, Cold Heart, a Royal Guard, here he is. And our Master is on the Royal Guard. We've set him up in the offense and support. Crit rate, give him crit damage. We give him increased damage inflicted by 5% when attacking 50% HP or less. Increased damage inflicted by 8% for the first turn on each enemy hit. Heals by 5% of the damage inflicted when attacking with 50% HP or less. Increases damage inflicted by 6% when attacking targets with higher max HP. Increases the damage inflicted by this champion's default skill by 2% each time it is used during the battle. Stacks across each round in the battle up to 10%. And the War Master to give him has a 60% chance of inflicting bonus damage when attacking. Our support rolls are accuracy. Increased accuracy by 20 when this champion has no skills and cooldown. Increased accuracy by 4 for each enemy alive. Stacks up to 16. It has a 5% chance of decreasing the cooldown of any random skill by one turn at the start of every turn. Decreases the target's turn meter when this champion hits them with the default skill for the first time. Decreases the turn meter by 20% with a single target skill and by 5% with AOE skills. Occurs once per target. The sniper increases the chance of placing any debuff from skills or attacks artifacts by 5%. And has a 30% chance to extend the duration of any debuff cast by this champion by one turn. It will not extend stun, sleep, freeze, provoke fear, true fear, bomb or petrification debuffs. And being the nuker in our team, you want him to have as much crit damage as possible and accuracy so that you know that he can, has the accuracy there to get off, the, off his 
critical hits. Now I could do with more crit rate, but at this stage, you know, I just don't have the, the right equipment to do that. I worked and put all the effort into accuracy and critical damage. Madam Ceres, you can see it's her as well. You know, we've got her with a lot of accuracy. So that's our five champions we'll be using in the team today in the Ice Golem in the dungeons. And like the Ice Golem, you know, it's mostly attacks all enemies. He's Frost Nova, Numbing Chill, attacks all enemies, plus 50% decrease accuracy. He's Frigid Vengeance, attacks all enemies one time. How it works, don't you see by the apparent simplicity of this dungeon in early stages? You know, but what you really want to do here is remove his minions first, and that's the idea of Armager and the team. If he's the one to take the last hit, he can he can stop them coming revived, being revived back to life. Take care of the the minions out of the way, and then you can focus on on the boss. And now we're at stage 9 of the Ice Golem Peak. We have Madame Ceres as our lead champion that gives her Aurora Skill additional 24% speed in all battles. We have Arbiter here as our revive champion. So if any of her other champions do die, she can revive them. Madame Ceres as our buff debuff champions. We have Royal Guard as our nuker. And Armager is here for block revives on the minions. And we'll get straight into it. <clears throat> Sorry guys, but I'm getting a bit of a flu. It's winter here in Australia now, so you know, it's starting to affect the voice a bit, but we'll soldier on with these videos. Decrease attack, decrease defense and speed out there by our Madam Ceres. It just makes it a lot easier, and if you get those buffs as well happening on your champions, you know, it gives an additional attack, additional defense. You know, it just helps to keep them all alive. That's the idea of having buff and debuff champions in your team. And that was the Ice Golem Peak Stage 9. Thank you.